Okay, the goal on this problem is we have a fourth degree polynomial. We want to use the fundamental theorem of algebra to break this down completely, factor it absolutely as much as possible, and pick out all of its uh, zeros, whether they're real or complex. So quite a bit going on in this problem. Stick with me on this. We're gonna start out and take a look at possible rational zeros and test these out using synthetic division. So possible rational zeros, these are gonna come from factors of the constant, 10, divided by factors of the leading coefficient. In this one, it's one. So I'm gonna list out 10, you can factor as either one times 10, two times five, or that's about it. One, you can only factor as one times one. So all of our possibilities are gonna be listed as the order matters here, one over one, two over one, five over one, or 10 over one. So that works out with a little bit of simplifying down to be one, two, five, 10, both the positive and negative case for each one of these. So that's why we have the plus and minus out in front. Um, to save us some time, I'm gonna pick out one that actually works. Okay, so we're gonna test these using synthetic division. As you're testing these on your own, you're not always gonna pick out the right one from the very beginning, but I'm gonna go ahead and list out, we have our coefficients for the original polynomial. So we have one, negative five, negative five, 23, and 10 go up here. Those came from these coefficients from the original, didn't skip over any powers of X, so we didn't need any zeros as placeholders. Now we can test any of these 10 possibilities, both positive and negative, remember, are all, are all possibilities. For the interest of time, I'm gonna test negative two because I already know it works, because I did this beforehand. All right, so the one comes down, now it's multiply, and vertically, Multiply again, negative two times negative seven makes positive 14. Now we add vertically, we're gonna get nine. Multiply negative 18, add, we get positive five. Multiply negative two times five makes negative 10. Add vertically, we get zero. Zero is our remainder. That's what we're looking for as we're testing these to make sure that we get a zero for our remainder. So from here, what we can do is we can rewrite our original function g of x as the divisor, because we tested a negative two, we were dividing by x plus two, multiplied by the quotient. The quotient is gonna be given by these values at the bottom. So the quotient, these are actually the coefficients for our quotient. So it goes constant, x to the first, x squared, x cubed. So I can list this out as one x cubed minus seven x squared plus nine x plus five as our quotient. Now we've broken it down to a third degree polynomial in here. I don't see any nice ways to factor this um, just by hand from techniques that we've already thought about in the past. It's four terms, but I don't think a, um, a factor by grouping is gonna work very nicely on this one. So instead, what I'm gonna suggest is we just focus on this third degree polynomial, list out its possible rational zeros and kind of start from the beginning again. So this time our constant, we're focused on five, which can only be factored as one and five. And then our leading co coefficient here is gonna be a one again, which can only be one times one. So this will break down to one over one or five over one or the negative of each of those cases. So we've kind of cut down the different possibilities for our possible rational zeros, either positive or negative one, positive or negative five. So again, let's test. We're gonna use one, negative seven, nine, and five up above here because those are the coefficients for the polynomial we're trying to divide. And again, for the interest of time, let's Let's pick one that I kind of already tested to know that it works. Let's go with positive five. So the one comes down, we're gonna multiply, five times one makes five, add vertically, so negative seven plus five makes negative two, multiply, five times negative two makes negative 10, add negative one, multiply negative five, and again, we ended up with a remainder of zero. So where does that put us? Well, I'm gonna bring down the x plus two that we've already found worked, that factor. We just tested five and know that that's gonna be a zero. So x minus five is what we were really dividing by there. And then next to this, I'm gonna write our quotient. 
So our quotient this time is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 1. All right, again, this is constant, a number, x to the first, x squared, as you kind of count up and read off our quotient from down below here. All right, in looking at this, we have x squared minus 2x minus 1. I don't think this will factor nicely for us. Um, we are down to a quadratic, so we've got some experience in factoring quadratics, but this one's not going to factor nicely for us. So instead, off to the side here, what I'm going to do is simply use x squared minus 2x minus 1. I want to know when does that equal 0. So to find that out, what we're going to have to do in this case is pull out the quadratic formula and fill in there. So we have negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And with a little bit of simplifying down, the negative of negative 2 is positive 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. And then the double negative there is going to make it plus 4 more over 2. Let's continue just breaking this down. We have 2 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2, which will be 2 plus or minus. To break down the square root of 8, we're going to have to look for a factor that's a perfect square. So 4 is a perfect square. So we can say 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2, but we still have a 2 underneath the square root. And this will break down to 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 as I kind of think about this 2 from our denominator, putting a copy with each term from our numerator. And then that's when you get to cancel out the 2s that are outside of the radical with the denominator. OK, so we now have two more zeros, OK? Uh, 1 plus the square root of 2 and 1 minus the square root of 2. So let's list this out. We know our zeros and our factor form. That's the big goal on here, OK? Um, from our synthetic division up above, we said negative 2 is a 0, and 5 is going to be a 0 as well. So listing these out, we say negative 2 and 5 are both zeros. And the work we did off to the side here by setting it equal to 0 and solving down, we can say 1 plus the square root of 2 is a 0, and 1 minus the square root of 2 is also a 0. That's what that plus and minus means over here. And finally, to list out all the, the factored form here, we want to remember is it always goes as x minus whatever you have as a 0 is going to make a factor. OK, so negative 2 goes along with x plus 2. x minus a negative 2 makes x plus 2. 5 was a 0, so x minus 5 is a factor. Here's where things get a little bit trickier, but they aren't that bad. It's always, um, sorry, x minus whatever the zero is. So 1 plus the square root of 2 can go inside a set of parentheses. And x minus whatever the zero is, 1 minus the square root of 2 will go in another set of parentheses. Now we can clean this up just a little bit by getting rid of those sets of parentheses inside the other sets of parentheses. So we can say by distributing that negative, we get x minus 1 minus the square root of 2 inside that set. And x minus 1 plus the square root of 2 inside that last set of parentheses. So what we've accomplished is we completely factored this using, um, using some synthetic division, picking out our zeros, connecting together zeros and factors. So that's the fundamental theorem of algebra is we broke this down completely. So all of these are x rays to the first powers. And if we were to multiply this all back out, we'd get back to that original function that we started with. All right, hope this helps out. I know this can be a tricky problem, but keep up the good work. You got this.